Deep in the underground jungle, there is an abandoned plague lab, with materials capable of mutating creatures and creating true abominations. After many years, the old lab was eventually damaged by a large beehive that had formed nearby. A powerful queen bee was extensively exposed to this plague. It mutated into a giant goliath that would prove to be Raiden's most challenging adversary so far. However, Raiden was not going to back down from a fight, and he was determined to be victorious. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are doing a rogue class on death mode, and last episode we were doing a lot of preparations for the Plaguebringer Goliath. We defeated the Martian invasion, we also did some dungeon defender event stuff, and farmed up a bunch of items like the Fallen Paladin's Hammer, and we started getting our Plague Nades, we got some Shock Grenades, all sorts of good stuff. And I asked you guys what sort of weapons I should try on the Plaguebringer Goliath, and a few people mentioned the Fantasy Talisman, so I've got it right here. And a bunch of people have recommended the Plague Nade, so I've gone ahead and actually farmed up the Queen Bee several times. I think I farmed her up like 15, 20 times, so we would have enough ingredients to craft a bunch of Plague Nades. It looks like we actually still have a bunch of Bee Nades left, so we farmed up the Queen Bee pretty quickly in between episodes. I mean, like, I can kill her almost instantly now. And so I just bought a bunch of Queen Bee summons from the Witch Doctor just kept fighting her. And now we've got 1,183 Plague Nades, which means these are not going to get consumed anymore. And you can see this is such a cool item. It shoots out little bees all over the place, and it's going to do a lot of damage. Now let's go ahead and craft a few of these summons for the Plague Bringer Goliath. And it looks like I'm out of iron. <laughs> I was going to craft a few of them, but we don't have iron or lead. So let's craft a whole bunch. We've got like a 1,000 lead ore but I haven't turned them into bars for a really long time. Okay, now we've got like 100 lead bars. So let's go ahead and just craft five for now. We've got the alchemical flask accessory. I'm not gonna use it on my first attempt, but if we have issues with the plague debuff that it uses on us, then we may put this on, but I do like the accessories that I've got right now. We've got the deific amulet, the vampiric talisman, Asgard's valor, the ambrosial ample, We've got the angel treads and we've got the scoria wings and we're using the scoria hydrothermic armor. So I think we've got a pretty good set right here. The ambrosial ample actually will help reduce some of the damage from the boss, I think. At least that's what people have said because bee and hornet enemies do less damage. So now let's go ahead and teleport to the jungle. I actually did a bunch of changes to the arena and actually got a little bit carried away. It's huge now. And in the middle, I added a little Rito pixel art because we were no longer in the jungle biome. So I put a bunch of lizard blocks down and I was just thinking, you know, what can we do to make this look a little bit cooler? So I added the Rito R. And now we can go ahead and start up this fight and see how we do. Um, let's switch on our map. That should help. Uh-oh. Man, this fight is pretty tricky. We gotta be careful. So, it's good that we're fighting this underground, because this fight can get really bad if you're above ground, apparently, because it will do an enrage mechanic. So now... I'm just going to go ahead and start throwing some of these plague nades because these are going to do some homing bees and that's pretty good. It's really hard to dodge the diagonal lunges that it does, although with this lag it helps just a little bit. That diagonal lunge that the Plaguebringer Goliath does is really what's getting me, I think. All the other attacks are decently easy to dodge. Well, I'm back at base, and I noticed that we got the Traveling Merchant up here. So let's see what he's got. And it looks like we've got the Frost Barrier, which is actually an item that's pretty hard to get, and it's required for Orc Tesla body armor. So I definitely want to get one of those. I remember having a hard time getting that on the Magnus series. So one of the things that I've wanted to craft for a while and try out is the Moab. I heard that it's actually pretty good. Well, it looks like we've already got a cloud and a balloon, so we just need to get Blizzard and Sandstorm. 
And then we can do the bundle of balloons. I think this is the first time I've ever crafted a bundle of balloons in Terraria. And we can upgrade the bundle of balloons into the Moab, I think. And all we need to do that is the lucky horseshoe, the jetpack, souls of sight, might, fright, bundle of balloons, and frog legs. So it looks like the only thing we're missing is the lucky horseshoe, which I believe we can just craft right here. And there we go. And it rolled to menacing, which is pretty good. Ooh, we got a blood moon. Let's go ahead and turn that off. This basically gives us lots of jumps, including the jetpack. Um, I'm hoping that it'll give us the mobility we need to do this fight pretty well. Yeah, we've got some pretty good mobility here. It's weird to actually have to click jump. It's very much like pre-hard mode, but overall this seems to be a very fast moving accessory. So I think we'll actually be pretty good here. So now let's go ahead and try this out on the boss and see if we can do a little bit better. Well, we dodged that and we just gotta manage to aim in addition to doing crazy dodges. Oh. Oh my gosh. I didn't think it was gonna do a third dash there. I wonder if it always does a third dash. This the damage output of this boss is insane. Okay, well we are at least to 70%. Ooh, we got hit there. That was bad. Okay. Well, we managed to dodge those. That was pretty good. And we dodged that. Dodge that. We're actually getting somewhat consistent on dodges. And my buffs are going crazy. We probably need to make sure we have one less buff. Well, this is definitely a loss, but 51%, that's a little bit better. Okay, this time, let's go ahead and try a weapon that we do not need to aim at all. And we can basically treat it like a summon and just do dodges. Because this boss requires so much dodging. I just don't think this weapon has the damage potential. But we may as well try it. And I'm just going to throw it up in the air. This is one of the hardest bosses in the game. I'd rather fight Providence, Yaren, pretty much Supreme Calamitous, any boss other than the Plaguebringer Goliath. It's so tricky. Oh no. The fight was way longer because we were doing much less damage per second. And we got down to 61%. Unfortunately, though, it was pretty sloppy and I missed a lot of my dodges. So let's go right back and try that again. Hopefully we can do a little bit better. It's just going to be a lot of practice. I probably should just build a house down here instead of using potions. This time, let's use plague grenades. And this will lag quite a bit, give us an extra reaction time which is a little bit cheesing it. Although this is kind of weird playing it in slow motion. Although it's making it really easy to dodge. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oops, that's a hard one to dodge. I was too close to it. Well, we almost got adrenaline there. We were getting really close. And we're already down to 50%. Ooh, we did not need to get hit by that. Oh, and we got hit by another one. No, <laughs> why? Oh, that looked like we were gonna miss it. Ah, no. The whole run's falling apart in like two seconds. Yep. So what I did is switched out the Asgard's Valor for the Evasion Scarf, and that should help us out a little bit.
There we go. There we go. Yes, we got him. Well, we finally beat the Plaguebringer Goliath. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I don't really know what was so different about that fight versus the other ones, but we definitely did a lot better. We were dodging most of the times it would dash at us, and that was a lot better. Plus, this weapon seems to be doing a lot better than the other ones I was trying, so I would probably recommend using the Fantasy Talisman. And now it's time to take a look at our treasure bag, and let's see what we got. So we've got the Toxic Heart. This can be combined with some of these other accessories to form this awesome Plague Hive later on, but we need the Ancient Manipulator for that. Then we got the Infected Armor Plating, which is huge, and we've got a Melee Ranged Magic and Summon Weapon. The Infected Armor Plating is mainly for the Summoner Armor and then the Draydon's Arsenal Weapons right here. And the one we can use is the System Bane. So let's go ahead and craft that. And it looks like it can stack up to five. So let's craft a few more. So let's see what this weapon can do. Interesting. <laughs> this is a very weird weapon. So this is doing 3000 damage and this thing has zero charge and it's only rolled to serrated. So if we roll this to flawless and we throw these down, my goodness, we can do some really good damage. 4,000 damage, and this is just passive. We can throw our Fantasy Talisman as well and do even more damage. One thing I want to do is buy a treasure bag for the Plaguebringer Goliath and hope we can get the syringe. There we go. That's the rogue weapon we need. And oh my gosh, this thing looks amazing. I was worried it was going to be more like a flask, and usually flasks are a little bit hard to aim, but this looks like it's a dart or something. And we've got the Malevolence. That's such a good bow. We use that a lot in the Anna the Archer series. And it says it throws a high velocity syringe that increases damage as it travels. So if we're hitting the boss from a distance, we're actually doing pretty good damage right there. If we look at our boss checklist, you can see we've defeated all of the bosses up to Betsy, Duke Fishron, and the Ravager. So I'm thinking of doing the Ravager next. Let's go ahead and craft the summon for the Ravager. I think it's uh, the Death Whistle. And this is a consumable, so let's craft a few of them, maybe just five. I've heard that the Ravager got buffed quite a bit in the last update, so I'm curious to see how this goes. Um, actually, let's throw some of these system banes down. Oh my gosh, this is insane. He's already going nuts on us. It's like so jumpy, very much like Astrum Arius. Okay, this is going to be a kite type of fight, but we do have this syringe, which I think is doing pretty well. Man, he's so fast. Let's just discord away. Yeah, this is going to be intense. I like that they've changed this fight. This fight used to be so weird with it being so stationary. It's honestly pretty cool how this weapon is focused on distance doing extra damage because that means with this boss we'll be able to do a lot better. It's weird how the boss can kind of track you in the air when you like go under it. It will kind of follow you as it falls. I'm not really used to that. That was something I noticed with Arius and it made it a lot more difficult to kind of dodge the boss and everything. Okay, this isn't going to be too bad though. We've almost got Rage, and we've almost got Adrenaline. Oh, there we go. We got Rage at least. Man, we're getting a little bit laggy here. But there are a lot of things happening. Oh my gosh, he's moving so quickly. This is insane. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, let's throw some of these System Banes down and just get some damage going over there. Oh my gosh, we're taking so much damage. Okay, we gotta get used to this new part of the fight. Okay, let's throw a few more System Banes down. Those seem to be doing insanely well against this boss, especially when he lands on the ground. Okay, we got this. Ugh. 
There we go. Throw some more of those down. And get back into the syringes. Sounds kind of bad. Let's take them out. Oh my gosh, we're getting so close. Oh no. Oh no. This is insane. I need to heal. No. <laughs> 2%? 2%? What is going on? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! No! <laughs> oh, that was insane. I have never gotten that hyped about the Ravager ever. I'm really excited about how they've changed this fight. My goodness, that was fun. That fight was so close, and I was so worried we were going to die at the end. Well, we've got a fleshy geode. Um. So that's what we open up to get all the items. Pretty cool. And then we got the Infernal Blood, which permanently makes Rage Mode do 15% more damage. Very cool. And then we've got the Spiked Blood Pact, which is pretty good. It's something that we can use later on to combine into the core of the Blood God. What this does is doubles your max health. It allows you to be critically hit 25% of the time. After a critical hit, you gain various buffs for 10 seconds. So this boss can actually drop a really powerful rogue weapon, apparently. So I want to go ahead and beat it a few times, maybe, and see if we can get that item. This part's actually decently easy because he's mainly just running around the arena trying to find a spot to land, and you can kind of just dash side to side, and for the most part, you can evade his attacks. I'm starting to get the hang of this new fight doing a lot better this time. I actually had adrenaline there. Ooh, we're making some mistakes, though. It does start getting pretty hectic. So, let's see what we got. Well, we got the Flesh Totem and the Ultimus Cleaver, and we got the Geode, which gives us all those different items. And now that we've beat him twice, let's go ahead and buy a treasure bag and see if we can get anything different. Um, well, we've got more materials. Let's go ahead and buy another one. It is four Platinum, so we can't buy too many. There we go. We got the Rogue Weapon. Excellent. Well, we managed to roll it to Unreal, and we're running a little bit low on money, so... We'll probably just leave it right there for now. And let's go ahead and try this weapon out and see how good it is. This is doing like 3,000 damage or so. Can kind of spike up to 4,000. So the tooltip says that it throws a disc that rolls on the ground and occasionally launches an explosive disc. So this is interesting. It rolls on the ground. It's kind of cool. This might actually be good for the Dungeon Defender event. Throw these on either side of the map and it'll kill all of the enemies really fast, I'm sure. In fact, with the System Bane, if we threw this down on the side with like an Ogre, that would be really powerful for the Dungeon Defender event. So I think we actually probably could defeat Betsy next episode if we want to go ahead and try that. And I think that's a great place to end this episode. It was quite fun and challenging to defeat the Plaguebringer Goliath and the Ravager today, but we did it. And now we're one step closer to the Moon Lord and the Lunatic Cultist event and all that good stuff coming up soon. So if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.